open ye the gates, that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Uh, this is a great text. Uh, I, uh, there are so many struggling with peace today um, because of all the uh, uproar in the country. Um, and uh, what's God's answer to all the commotion going on in the country? Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Who? Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. What's the answer to the anxiety and the nervousness? Patients come to my office every day wondering about getting some medicine to help with their anxiety. Ativan, Prozac, Zanax, these are popular medications. And what does God want us to do to get peace, to get medications? No. He wants us to, to readjust our time. And instead of being, instead of focusing on watching the news, watching political rallies, watching um, Jeopardy, fill in the blank. He wants us to spend time with Him, whose mind is stayed on Thee. Uh, right now, I'm uh, listening through. I'm going through the Desire of Ages on uh, audio. You can on audio verse. You can listen to anything you want. And so I'm listening to the. Uh, the uh, De De Desire of Ages. Um, after this, I'm going to go look at the Acts of the Apostles, uh, listen to the Scripture, go out for a walk, and listen to the Bible or listen to the Spirit of Prophecy. Spend a few hours doing that rather than watching television and see if God's promise doesn't become fulfilled in your life. That suddenly you start to have more peace. And indeed, He doesn't promise just peace. He promises what? Perfect peace. Perfect peace. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah gives everlasting strength. Next, last week we looked at Luke 16, verse 10. This is a powerful text for addiction, for changing behavior. We don't need to focus on the big mistakes. We need to focus on the little mistakes that lead to the big mistakes. And every one of us, as we think about our weaknesses, our failures, we can see the truth of this text. He that is faithful in that which is least is also uh, is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least. So whatever you think, oh, that's a little thing. That's a little thing. Whatever you think is the littlest thing, that's the problem. That's the point. That's the point. The problem is that which we think is insignificant. That's how the devil gets us. Amen. Because we, we go past things that we think are so insi insignificant they can't be important. But it's the insignificant. Whatever you think is the least is the reason why you're struggling with sin. Sin is a battle over that which is least, according to Luke 16 and verse 10. Amen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. And so those were last week's verses. And I just have one that I want to add for today because um, the Lord introduced in John chapter 6 these thoughts about eating the flesh of the Son of God and drinking His blood. And He did that in a way that was offensive, apparently, to those who were His hearers because they were ready to surrender. When Jesus says he, want, he wants us to eat his flesh and drink his blood, what does he mean? He's talking about his word. He's talking about his word. And here's a great text, Jeremiah 15, 16. Uh, thy words were found and I did eat them. And, they were, and thy word was the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name. O Lord God of hosts, thy words were found and I did eat them. So when the scripture says in John 6, he talks about eating the flesh of the Son of God, he's referring to the Word. He wants the Word to become part of us. So we need to spend time every day. If we're not spending time every day with Jesus studying the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, 
letting those thoughts just permeate our mind and just kind of meditating upon it. It's not about memorizing the Bible text. It's about memorizing them and then meditating upon them and letting God change our minds. To bring glory to God is to reflect His character. The glory of God is the character of God. And the character of God is reflected in His Word. Let's not be deceived. Let's Amen. not be deceived. Amen. Now, last week uh, we did the abomination of desolation. And um, we defined it. Abomination is uniting the sacred with either the profane, the idolatrous, or the common. And uh, I didn't get to this slide. I wish I would have. Let's do it now. When we think of the abomination of desolation, it's all on this one slide. And it's interesting how the number three comes into this topic. The abomination of desolation, we know it's very important. This whole this slide is going to reflect everything we talked about last week. We know it's important because Jesus spoke about it in three different Gospels. And you see there on the screen the um, different texts, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So we know it's important because Jesus spoke about it three times. And then we know that uh, as we look at the book of Daniel, as Jesus in Matthew 24 told us to do, in the book of Daniel it's mentioned three times, in chapter 9, 11, and 12. The prophet Daniel mentions it in three different chapters of his book. And then there are three fulfillments of the abomination of desolation throughout human history. There are three fulfillments. So it's mentioned by Jesus three times, it's mentioned by Daniel three times, and it's fulfilled three times. The first time, in 68 AD, when the Roman army surrounded Jerusalem, and then the desolation, that's the abomination. The desolation was the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in 70 AD. The second fulfillment occurred when Clovis of the Franks, a pagan leader, a pagan uh, magistrate, joined forces with the church, the prevailing church, the Catholic church, and um, that occurred in 508. He gave his might to the Roman church, and that was the abomination when church and state come together. That's an illustration of what's going to happen at the last day, in the last days. Church and state coming together, 508. And then 1798, or the 1790s, uh, it was the desolation. That was the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages were the whole 1260 years. That's desolation, yes. And then the French Revolution occurred in 1793 to 1797. And that was desolation. That was the culmination. The French Revolution was the culmination of uh, the abomination. That's what it led to. It was a terrible period of four years uh, with uh, God being put to the side and a nation um, governing itself without the Lord. And if you study the French Revolution, you see where any nation is heading that puts the Lord to the side. And so that's the desolation uh, of the second fulfillment. Amen. And then the uh, last one is in the future. Very soon in the future. It's the National Sunday Law. That's the abomination. Again, taking a common day and uniting it with a sacred concept. That is the holy day of God. Putting them together. That's the abomination. And soon to follow after that, the desolation is the seven last plagues. Amen. And, and the coming of the Lord, which will be to the ones who are following the Sunday law, will be a day of a terrible grief, terrible grief, terrible Amen. fear. So those are the three fulfillments in history of the abomination of desolation. So now as you move forward, you can have that in your mind. It's a very easy concept in this sense to understand. Spoken by Jesus three times, Daniel three times, and fulfilled three times with the last one uh, coming soon. And we see in these first two uh, uh, understanding of how it's going to happen at the end of time that helps us to understand the future. Amen. Amen. It's, it's interesting how, uh, how parallel we see events happening in the United States today are with the conditions of the French Revolution. Yes. Very, very similar, very similar. It, it seems to be preparing the way for the National Sunday Law. Again, we want to highlight 
the path of success in life, if we are not sick of sin and tired of its results, we need to focus and meditate on that problem. We need to be focusing and meditating on the thought of what sin has done to us, to the world, and to the Lord. We, are, we want to be sick and tired of sin and its results. We need the Lord to help us to become that way. If we're not, uh, we need to get right on that issue. Help the Lord to uh, teach us of that thought. So today we're going to do the missing nutrient in the health study and uh, the four stages of the Sunday Law. The Sunday Law is not going to be, it's not going to happen all at one time. It's going to be a four stage event and uh, happening over some period of time, not decades, but maybe months to a year or two. And so we're going to go over that in a few moments. We remember uh, one of our texts that we like to highlight when the books of Daniel and Revelation are better understood, believers will have an entirely different religious experience. We're looking for that different experience that's what Laodicea needs, a new, an entirely different religious experience. They will be given such glimpses of the open gates of heaven that heart and mind will be impressed with the character that all must develop in order to realize the blessedness, which is the reward of the pure in heart. And then picking up on John chapter 6 is this passage, those who eat the flesh and drink the blood. And what does it mean to eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of God? What does it mean to do that? It means to meditate on His Word. Have it be a focus for us. Um, I'm now on day 148 of walking seven miles a day. Uh, I, hope, I hope by God's strength that I don't give it up ever. And the reason why I love the seven miles per day is because during those seven miles of walking, I'm listening to the Bible or the Spirit of Prophecy for the whole time. And that's what makes me look forward to it. I am exercising mind and body at the same time. So the Lord has my undivided attention. And I'm able to meditate on His Word and listen to it in a very tranquil and peaceful environment that is walking. I know that if I sit on my, on my couch and try to read the Bible, my habit is I start to fall asleep. But I can't fall asleep when I'm walking. And so I, I have been really blessed the last 148 days by walking and listening uh, to the Word of God. Sometimes my wife joins me and I'm not able to listen because I want to listen to her and talk. That's a good thing too. God is uh, binding my wife and I in matrimony. Uh, are you blessing our marriage? So that's just a little tool that, I, that the Lord has shared with me to help me to uh, eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of God. And when that happens, we will start into action forces that cannot be repressed. And that's what I want. That's what we that's what we all want. Amen. Thoughts, questions before we go forward. Thank you for letting me come late. I'm sorry I got here a few minutes late. Neil. I forgot uh, something at home uh, today or yesterday, and I had to swing by my house to get it. So let's go on with the health message. Let's do the health message. We have some food later on today that we're going to share together. I always enjoy coming here and Enjoying the food that Steve and Marjorie and uh, Steve prepare, always delicious. And uh, this is a concept that is so important when you think about health. Just ask yourself, when, we're, when it's 10 o'clock at night, we're about to go to bed and our, and our brain says, why don't, we go get, why don't you go get a snack, you, look, you, set, you feel hungry. Ask yourself simply the question. This is not just a cute phrase. This is to be used. It's 10 o'clock at night, I'm about to go to bed, and my, my brain says, you're hungry, go get something to eat. Well, we know that we don't, it's not really best to eat before bedtime. So what do we do? Well, certainly we pray, but one of the things we ask ourselves, do I, am I, am I going to go eat because I need to eat or because I want to eat? Am I eating to live or living to eat? And, and the answer is always obvious. Whenever I ask myself the question, I never wonder about the answer. <laughs> the answer is always obvious. Yeah, okay, yeah. do I need this? Am I, uh, am I uh, uh, eating to live right here? No, I'm not eating to live. 
I'm living to eat. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, Lord, have mercy on me right now. I think, I think my steps as they're going to the kitchen, I think I'll detour my steps and I'll go into the bathroom or the bedroom and take care of my teeth and so forth and go to bed. Because I don't want to, I don't want to live to eat. That's not what Jesus wants for me. Yeah, and so, so yeah. use this. The point of this is not that it's a cute little turn of words. It's to be used. Ask yourself. And at first, you'll, you might be asking yourself this many, many times. After a while, it becomes second nature. Habits get developed over time. But use this. Use this. It's very important to use these little questions in our mind to help us to do the right thing. Help Jesus. Let food be our medicine. Let your food be your let food be thy medicine. Let medicine be thy food. Uh, and that's what we hope to highlight. We highlighted it the first week by talking about the study of uh, 11 years ago that highlighted that the uh, the power of allium and cruciferous vegetables. Has anybody been eating more allium and cruciferous vegetables? Um, Amen. Uh, Let's be doers of the word, not hearers only being deceived. How easy is it when he said to Adam and Eve, you can eat freely of every tree in the garden, just one tree, please don't go there. That's where the adversary is going to have access to your mind. How easy is this in, in, in parallel with that? Mm -hmm. Most of the cancer-fighting properties of food is found in allium and cruciferous vegetables. Let's incorporate them into every meal. We know it doesn't have to be a lot. Remember that slide that showed it doesn't need to be a lot? Well, I don't like Brussels sprouts. Well, can you eat two of them? That might be enough. It might be no more beneficial to have 20 than to have two. So it's not that we have to put a lot. So how hard is it to put a little onions and garlic into whatever we're eating? Powerful and so easy. So easy. Amen. The inclusion of cruciferous and algae vegetables in the diet is essential for effective dietary cancer-fighting properties. So why were plants added to the diet in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 18? Was it as a punishment or was it a blessing? Yes, it was a blessing. Why were plants added? Because they kill cancer. Because God loves us unconditionally. How many ways does God save us from harm of which we know nothing? Amen. Many. Amen. Praise the Lord that, it, that He doesn't have to wait for me to ask Him to save me before He saves me. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what a blessing is Genesis 3 and verse 18. What a blessing it is. And uh, these are other scriptures that have the same thought that we want our food to be our medicine and our medicine to be our food. It's in the scriptures. It's not some new thought. Science didn't discover this. Did scientists discover this? No. It was in the scriptures. Leaf for medicine. Where are leaves? Are they part of animal products? No. They're part of plant-based eating. Leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nation, both Old and New Testament. Yeah. And then last week, Twin Airs of the American Diet, uh, two problems that lay at the foundation of virtually all that is wrong with the American diet. Too many refined foods and animal products. Amen. Jesus is so good. You know how many times he saves me and I have no idea that I need to be saved. Right. Amen. Amen. Dr. Burkett, we're going to highlight today, we talked about uh, our uh, missing nutrients. The concept that Western diseases are lifestyle related and therefore potentially re preventable and reversible is the most important medical discovery of the 20th century. Powerful stuff. So the bottom line to our health crisis is to simply eat a very basic diet, primarily of foods as grown as they are found in nature as they have come from the hand of the Creator. And delicious. Uh, delicious is the food that is best. The food that is best is not less delicious than the food that is not good for us. It's more delicious. Amen. And so today, the missing nutrients. Uh, let's go through this topic, a very interesting topic, a basic topic of nutritional health. And uh, let's introduce the missing nutrients before we tell you what it is. We're going to keep it a secret for just a moment or two. And uh, 
I, I want to I wanna have you look at the, the qualities of this missing nutrient uh, and how it's best to uh, trust the Lord before we understand Him. It is true that God wants us to understand. Come, let us reason together, He told the prophet Isaiah, right? But, but this is highlighting a principle that it's a good idea... <coughs> When you know that something is of the Lord, when you know it's a truth of God, it's a good idea to believe it and to follow it even before you understand it. Mm -hmm. How often, as parents, have we all suggested to our children when they ask us why, in response to what we told them to do, that we say just we say some variation of trust me. Because, because they might not be able to understand what we want them to do, and we know that. But they still need to do it. We are like children to God. We can't understand His ways always. That's an obvious truth, right? Mm -hmm. But look at this. This missing nutrient has no calories, no vitamins, no minerals. It's not digested. That means it's not changed. It, it's the, there's no enzymes that work upon it. There's no acid in our stomach that changes it. It, it. It's not it's not worked upon by the digestive processes of our body at all. And it's not absorbed. It never leaves our digestive tract. So these are the qualities of this missing nutrient. Conclusion. And this is why I went through that little thought about us trusting the Lord even before we understand Him. Would you, if you were given these qualities of a nutrient, would you say it's probably unnecessary? Why would it be necessary if it has no calories, no vitamins, no minerals? It's not digested, not absorbed. Maybe it's not necessary. Well, that's, what, that's indeed what they concluded. Yeah, Amen. Hi, I'm Amen. It appears there's no redeeming value. It does. Let's wait for Lee that's a yep. good situation. You want to use Sorry. this? Sorry. Didn't think you were coming. Uh, well, yeah, I, that would probably work. I had to sing at church today. Oh, okay. So well, I good. couldn't leave when I was normally. It's good that you got to Amen. Yeah. Glad you're here, Lena. Thank you. I'm sorry <laughs> it took so long. Do you want to use this, Mia? Um, can I just... Can I set it on the thing here? Yeah, thank you. I brought one of those laser. Okay. Just in case I need them. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. It's a welcome interruption. It's a few of us. I think what I'm going to do, just for Alita's benefit, I want to go back to this one slide. 
I just want to go over this for Lena's benefits uh, because she was here last to so her together. And I didn't want to leave her without an understanding of this because I didn't show this slide and I meant to. So remember last time we were together two yes. weeks ago, we talked about the abomination of desolation. Yes. Just real briefly, I just want to go over this. Just th this slide sums up the whole presentation, and that is that Jesus talked about it in three of his gospels that lends the thought that it's important. Uh, then, then he led us to the prophet Daniel's book. He said, go read that. And it's mentioned in three chapters of the book of Daniel, in chapter 9, chapter 11, and chapter 12. Again, important. And then it's fulfilled in three times in history. That is the abomination of desolation. First time when the Roman army surrounded Jerusalem, and then the desolation. That was the abomination. Because you have, uh, you're have you uniting the common with the uncommon. The common with the sacred. And then, uh, and then the desolation is when the uh, city and the temple were destroyed two years later. And then we have uh, the desolation in 508 when the, the French, the Franks, with Clovis as their leader, uh, lent their strength to the church. So state and church together. And uh, the desolation then was the Dark Ages and the French Revolution at the end of the Dark Ages. And then those are, as we study those, we understand what's soon to come. And that is we have the National Sunday Law, which is taking a common day and uniting it with a sacred concept. That is the holy day of God. And uh, the desolation then is the seven last plagues uh, after that time. So I just wanted to mention that just so you can have that in your mind as we uh, go into the study for today, which is the stages of the Sunday Law. Okay, and let's, um, Alita has heard some of the health presentations maybe a few times, <laughs> and so so I can just pick up where we were at, because uh, Alita already has it in her mind. And so, uh, uh, the reality is a high blank diet can in the majority do these things. Isn't that amazing? Thanks for the uh, pointer, Steve, this is good. Uh, it can prevent these conditions, and in America, in Western Europe, these are very common conditions, very common, and these are primarily caused by not having this missing nutrient, by not having the nutrient that has these qualities. I, I, can't, I can't say that enough, because it always blows my mind. Not having a, a nutrient that has these qualities, no calories, no vitamins, no minerals, not digest. You know, I think I need to get more supplements to be well. You see the hidden message here? It's not about having the right vitamins. It's not about having the right minerals. No, because this nutrient that prevents all these things and cures all the things in this cow has no vitamins, no minerals. It's not digested or absorbed. I mean, just meditate on that for a moment. It, just, it kind of blows your mind. But it orientates us towards what yields health. And what yields health is not a magical supplement from the pharmacy. And I say that because so many people I see have such confidence and spend so much money on supplements. But here, the reality is a high blank diet can in the majority do all these wonderful things. And so what's the missing nutrient? Since Aliyah's been here a few times, what is the missing nutrient? Fiber. And what did you bring today for us to enjoy? Special people. Of course, I mentioned it last week. Fire. Yeah. All you got, Alita loves those who she shares with, and so all you got to do is mention what brings you happiness. And she wants to bring you happiness. And so we mentioned Special K and she brought it uh, today. And I wonder if there's any missing nutrients in the Special K loaf. I suspect there is, and that's what makes it so good for us. I did change from walnuts to pecans, because I didn't have any walnuts. <laughs> that's okay. We love you guys. Yeah. So the missing nutrient, if you haven't guessed, is fiber. Today, fiber deficient diseases are the most common causes of premature death and illness in Western society. And that's the problem. It's not that we're eating too much bad stuff. Well, I guess it is. It's not, we're not getting enough of this good stuff. We're not getting enough of this good stuff, the fiber. And so let's define what fiber is so we uh, understand. 
What is the fiber? Well, it's the parts of plants. It's only found in plant food. It's the parts of plants that are not digested. How is the fiber content of food estimated? Well, back when each of us were little children, they had something called crude fiber. I remember it. I remember when I was a little boy on the label, it would say crude fiber. Uh, it's the quantity of uh, material that's left over after the food is exposed to very powerful acids. They would do this in a laboratory. And whatever was left over, uh, it would uh, be called crude fiber. The problem is they use acids that are stronger than exist in the human body. So more of the fiber was destroyed than we actually would destroy in our own bodies. And so this underestimated the actual amount of fiber in our food. And they, it took them a while, 